Welcome back to the channel, your go-to spot for Linux and open source updates. Today we're diving into big news. Ubuntu 25.10 and Fedora 43 are dropping X11 in their GNOME editions, aligning with GNOME 49's bold move to make Wayland the only supported session. What does this mean for you? Stick around as we break it down why it's happening, what it changes, and what options you've still got. What are X11 and Wayland? Let's start with the basics. X11, or the X window system, has been the backbone of graphical desktops on Linux and Unix-like systems for decades. It's what makes your windows, buttons, and menus appear on screen. But it's old think 1980s tech, and it's showing its age. Enter Wayland, a newer, modern display protocol built from the ground up for today's hardware. It's smoother, more secure, and handles things like high-resolution displays and multi-monitor setups like a champ. So, why the switch? Wayland's been in the works for over a decade, and it's finally ready to take the lead. But it's not all perfect. Some older apps or niche tools built for X11 might struggle under Wayland. We'll get to that in a bit. Why this change now? Here's the trigger. GNOME 49, the desktop environment powering both Ubuntu and Fedora's main editions, is dropping X11 support entirely. Ubuntu 25.10 and Fedora 43 set to ship with GNOME 49, have no choice but to follow. This isn't a shock Wayland's been gaining traction for years. Red Hat, a heavy hitter in the Linux world and a key sponsor of GNOME and Wayland, is all in. Their enterprise distro, Arhel 10, is already Wayland only. But it's not just about GNOME or Red Hat. The Linux ecosystem is shifting toward Wayland as the future, promising better performance and security. Still, Change isn't always smooth, and some users aren't thrilled especially with what's coming next. What does this mean for users? If you use GNOME on Ubuntu 25.10 or Fedora 43, your Wayland only no X11 fallback. For most, this could be seamless. Wayland's fast, modern, and works great with newer hardware. But there's a catch. Some apps think legacy software or specific tools like certain screen-sharing programs rely on X11 features that Wayland doesn't fully replicate yet. If you depend on those, you might hit a snag. There's more. GNOME's also tying itself closer to Systemd, a system manager that's standard in most Linux distros, but controversial. This could make GNOME trickier to run on BSDs or systemed-free Linux setups like Chimera Linux. If you're in that niche, this shift might feel like a lockout unless some clever developers step up with workarounds. Alternatives and options. Don't worry, it's not all or nothing. This change only hits the GNOME editions. Ubuntu's got flavors like Kubuntu with KDE Plasma, Lubuntu with LXQT, and Zubuntu with XFCE All still supporting X11. Fedora offers KDE Plasma and XFCE too. So if you need X11, just pick a different desktop environment. Even better, many of these alternatives are embracing Wayland too. LXQE and XFCE have partial Wayland support, and Fedora's got Wayland-only options like Cosmic. Meanwhile, a new project called XLibre is forking the X11 server to keep it alive, claiming X.org maintainers have sidelined updates. X11's not dead yet. It's even used on BSDs, macOS, and Windows. So options abound. Conclusion. Ubuntu 25.10 and Fedora 43 dropping X11 for GNOME is a big step toward a Wayland future. It's exciting for modern desktop fans, but it might ruffle feathers for X11 loyalists or non-systemed users. The good news? Linux is all about choice. Stick with GNOME and Wayland or explore X11-friendly alternatives your call. Thanks for watching. Drop a like if this helped, subscribe for more Linux goodness, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.